This brief video lecture is recorded in order to better explain research approach or methodology, depending on which terminology you use. We're going to talk about deduction, induction, and abduction. This is a topic where I see a lot of students struggling, and I have a few tricks that I think will make these topics easier to understand. We are going to use a rather simple timeline to explain these concepts. And in that timeline, we have empirical, so empirical research, and theoretical. If we start with deduction, this deduction starts with a theoretical framework, which comes from literature. And that is used to make theoretical conclusions. Uh, and often that is made in terms of hypotheses or propositions. The third step is to test these uh, conclusions. And the final step is to uh, make final conclusions. And that is basically, basically, are we keeping the hypothesis or proposition, or are we reacting them? What is important to, to note here is that here we are creating a model. So we're using theory to create a model, and here we are using data to test the model. And you could say that the the analysis is done here because you need to have the model and you need to collect the data and then you do your analysis in order to present the final conclusions. If we move on to induction we have the same timeline and we have empirical, empirical research and theoretical. In induction, the first step is actually numbered zero, and it says that we have existing knowledge. Uh, and that is from prior research. What is important to know here is that in induction, it is okay to expand your prior knowledge, it is okay to read books, and what often happens is that you expand your background so the theory will guide you through your data collection. So we have a lot of existing background, even in induction, and we might read a lot of papers even in induction. The step number one is done real life observation. And that should not be confused with the data collection type observation. It is just that we collect data. And the final step then is that we make a theoretical conclusions or a framework. So we make theoretical conclusions. And perhaps we construct a framework or a model. So if we look here again, in this situation, we have the model here, and we have the data collection, or the data that we use is here. The analysis is done somewhere here. After the data is collected, we do the analysis in order to create the model. So what we can see now is that one of the key distinguishing features between deduction and induction is when we do, when we create the model and when we collect the data to test. I think th those are the two most important steps to, to keep track of. Here in deduction, we create a model and we use data in order to test the model. Whereas in induction, we have data and we use the data to create a model. So the order between data and model is perhaps the most important distinguishing features between these two methodologies. 
uh, once again, I want to stress that in induction, you have data, you have theoretical knowledge before doing research. You can read a lot. You can create a framework for your investigations, but we don't, in induction, we don't have a model that we want to test. We use theory to orient ourselves so that we know which data we are going to collect. And then we try and create a framework or a model out of the data. The final one that we're going to talk about is abduction. So we have the same timeline. We have empirical research. We have theoretical research. And it's abduction. Uh, abduction starts the same way as induction, that we have prior theoretical knowledge, or we don't have it. And the first step is denoted as making a deviating observation, or a deviating real life observation. Once again, it's not to be confused with the data collection type observation. It can be that we observe something in whatever type of data collection. We can observe it in an interview. We can observe it in secondary data and so on. The second step then is called theory matching. And what happens here is that we try to find theory to explain that which we have seen in reality. And what might happen then is that we realize that we need new data because the theory might tell us to go look for more data. Once we collect more data, we can then return to theory matching to see, is it starting to harmonize or do we need to collect more data? And this is an iterative circle that continues until we reach some sort of harmony. And at that point, we have theory suggestion or we present hypotheses or propositions. So the final part is very similar to induction in that, that we end up with conclusions or a framework or a model or a hypothesis or propositions. The words used here are not entirely consequent, but those are the words that are presented in the paper I will refer to. So if we look at the key steps again, we know that we have data down here and we know that we are kind of starting to create the model up here but then the final model will appear here so the model kind of appears in this iterative circle what is also key to note is that we do analysis here so the biggest difference between induction and induction is that abduction we actually do analysis continuously throughout this process of collecting data and creating a model so once again, if we highlight this, data collection, model creation, and analysis is done concurrently. One way to better understand this central loop is to look at the model upon which it's based. And it is based on a model called systematic combining. And systematic combining explain this puzzling process where we try to create a harmony between theory and data. So we could say that the goal here is that we want, uh, now I'm writing it in ing form, but we want to create a match. And what do we want to create a match between? So the idea is that we have theory, but we are not using all the theory that is available. Instead, we are only using a select part of theory. And that part is called the framework. Then on the other hand, if we look at the empirical side, then we have the entire empirical world. And that is all the data that is available. And of course, we can't investigate all the available data at one time. So we select some of the data. And in this case, the selected data is called the case. It doesn't have to be a case as in a case study, but this is the selection of data we're using. And the idea here is, is that throughout the research, throughout this iterative loop, 
we are trying to match these things so that we can get a better explanation. And this process is called uh, direction and redirection. So if we, if we look at this process, uh, we can think of it in this way, that we might see something in the real world. And in order to explain it, we need to look to theory. And we select the theory we need and we create a framework. But once we have done that, we realize that we need to collect new data and we need to bring that data into the case. And when we do that, we might once again realize that we need to go back to theory and revise our framework, which might cause us to have to go back to the empirical world to redefine our case. And we continue this iterative process until we end up in the middle where we have something matching, where we reach harmony. And what, what is described in systematic combining is this process. So that is just a more nuanced way of describing it. And the central part here inside, inside um, this iterative process, that is the systematic combining. But the original authors described it according to this model. So this is a brief overview. The information in this uh, in this short video is based on uh, Duba Ogade, who came up with systematic combining, and the information about deduction, induction, and uh, abduction is from uh, Kovacs and Spence. If you want to look into more into this, uh, you can look into Ericsson 2014 where abduction is used to argue for knowledge, knowledge creation. You can look into Ericsson 2015, where this research process ex is explained at a finer detail. So all the steps are explained um, with more nuance. And you can also look into Ericsson and Engström uh, 2021 to see how to visualize the research process. And that paper also stresses the importance of understanding crossroads that is point in your research where you where you need to look in a, in a new direction.